Good morning, YouTube. Today's video is going to be a little bit different today. I want to show you one of the hobbies I've had for a very long time and a problem that I have. And I'd also like to make some uh, photos with this gear, but of course, I think it deserves a little bit of explaining first. So my buddy Mike recently uh, started getting into photography and he's doing a, a really cool trip out to Peru. And so he started asking me a bunch of questions about what gear to get, if this lens is good, that lens is good. And uh, if you know anything about me, I'm one of those people that uh, generally speaking, less is more. And, uh, but I like to try a lot of different things. I like to do the absolute most with the absolute least. I used to shoot Nikon cameras and I started out with a D3100 and a kit lens if you guys are familiar with cameras, uh, which is kind of a smaller DSLR, kind of the bigger guys, but on the smaller side. Uh, and then I got all the way up to the D610, uh, the D810, bigger, big, beefy professional photographer uh, cameras, and uh, <laughs> a whole flurry of issues, right? Where um, I've had two cameras stolen, like just this, these crazy stories. But I used to shoot uh, street photography, a lot of street photography. I do a lot of uh, 365 projects, which is basically that you take one photo a day for 365 days. And uh, it's a lot of development. I mean, it's a lot of personal development. It's a lot of skills development. And it'll really tell you kind of what you're interested in, um, who you are, and of course you're going to improve if you take one photo every single day and you have to because obviously you're taking more than one photo to pick the best one um, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do a lot for you right and and i shot weddings for a long time i shot engagements i got to capture a, a few really cool moments and and that was awesome but uh, lately i've just not touched the photography thing in a long time i uh you know kind of shifted gears in, in life but i kept the gear around and let me show you kind of what what I've got going on here, because I think a couple of you guys might be kind of interested. So what we're looking at here is a set of lenses, of course, and then I have two camera bodies. Now, this is the older of the two. This is the Fujifilm X-T2, uh, which this, I switched from Nikon to Fujifilm because I wanted something that was a lot smaller, a lot more compact. Fujifilm has fantastic image quality, uh, color rendition, especially for the sides, but there's a very particular you know, kind of Fuji color science that a lot of folks just absolutely love. And this guy here is the Fuji X-T3. And I picked this up when Emma uh, seemed to show a little interest. And I said, hey, well, why don't you take my Fuji X-T2? You know, I'll pick up an X-T3. And just from a hardware perspective, of course, these cameras are just, well, one, they're beautiful. I mean, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful cameras. Um, they are digital, of course, as you'd expect, but you have an ISO dial over here. You have a shutter speed dial over here. You have an exposure compensation uh, on off. It's very simple, very simple design. It's a fantastic camera. Uh, but the interesting thing about these uh, APS-C sized, it's a smaller sensor than the big full frame sensor. Uh, the most interesting thing about them is the way that they allow you to adapt lenses, right? So. Right here, I have the 23 millimeter Fuji lens, and uh, it's a good lens, it's a sharp lens. It's uh, the equivalent of 35 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, so a little bit wider, and, and it's, a, it's a lovely lens. Nothing wrong with it at all, and you can see how small that is, and compared to my hand, I mean, this is easy. It's a lot less intimidating to shoot a wedding with one of these, of course, uh, than the massive, you know, Canon or Nike. A lot of wedding photographers like Canon uh, for one reason or another, but it's a little less intimidating and street photography with this is also fantastic but if we take a look at this guy however this is an uh, helios 44-2 uh, which is an old soviet lens it's a, it's a actually one of the most incredible lenses that you can get and we picked it up i picked it up for i think 35 bucks plus shipping on ebay a long time ago uh, but the the interesting thing is about this lens is say unlike our our perfect near perfect uh 23 millimeter f2 here this guy is also an f2 58 millimeter but the bokeh that is rendered out of this lens is absolutely fantastic if you guys are vintage lens uh hobbyist you kind of know that this lens is really really quite something the downside to it and although you get a little bit of that interesting bokeh the downside to it is that on the aps-c sensor the smaller sensor it doesn't render that bokeh quite as much, right? So you get a little bit of that interesting bokeh, but uh, it's really suited for a full frame camera. That's when this guy is really going to shine, but I still think it's an incredible lens to have on here. And of course you have a you have a metal, a metal ring for focusing and changing your aperture. It's just, 
it's just a just a wonderful lens but that's why I, i've been so attracted to the fujifilm lineup since the very beginning and i had the xt1 because you can actually view the the information i mean exactly as it's going to be you get a digital image in the viewfinder it's not an slr right a single lens reflex this is actually a digital image so what you see in here is what you get so if i change the aperture and it gets darker you see that uh, which is quite incredible so uh it, it, basically what you'd see you know with your iphones and things like that but of course quite better but then i have this whole collection here so we can go with kind of my favorite two lenses i think this is actually the 16 millimeter fuji and this is an f 1.4 it's an incredibly wide lens and uh, there's not much to say about it. They, it is focused by wire, which just means that you can't just manually turn it and expect it to be a one, one to one basically for focus, but it does an incredible job um, on either of these cameras of, of focusing. Now, it has a metal, a metal aperture ring. So when I go out and I shoot street photography with this guy, which might sound weird because street photography, usually you want to be a little bit farther away, right? But um, what I'll do is I'll set this on the camera, uh, set it to about so f8 usually is where i'm at i'll focus on infinity and uh and then i'll put the the strap around my neck and i'll just hold it down low so it gives a slightly different perspective when i get up to people i'll kind of walk towards them a little bit and you wouldn't believe the really cool shots that i've gotten in the past because of that uh, particularly around pike place market in seattle because you get a lot of folks that are uh, uh more interesting to say the least so i definitely love this lens it's it's not the heaviest and it's not the lightest, but uh, really good. And if we get this little guy, now I've got a 23 millimeter lens on here, which is the equivalent to the 35 millimeter on a full frame. This guy is a 35 millimeter, which is equivalent to about 50 or 52 millimeters on uh, full frame. So uh, also, you know, very, very small. And that's why I picked these two lenses up because I mean, they're just, it's just, they hide away really well. Uh, they don't stick out. It doesn't look like big, big money, but these lenses, both of these lenses are a fantastic pair, I think. And if I had to pick only one, I would probably pick the, the 23, but for, uh, you know, family portraiture and all around, if you can only have one, either of these would be fine. And you could definitely get away with the 35, I think, you know, another, another beautiful lens, uh, very small, uh, just really, uh, really pretty neat. So it's an F2, uh, they have an F1.8. Four, I believe or an f1.2 version of this lens and it's absolutely not worth it uh, it's like double the size and um, this is this is great I've had both lenses uh, this is definitely my preference here now if we come over here this lens has an interesting story this is a Fujifilm 56 millimeter f1.2 this is an APD and I got this on sale uh, usually to have a, a, a hood a lens hood but uh, the interesting story about that I asked Emma to give me this lens or grab it for me and we were in the <laughs> we were out camping in the capital state forest uh, and she actually tossed it to me thinking that i would uh i'd be able to catch it and it fell right in the mud it did crack the little plastic lens hood uh, but this glass you can see ignore a little bit of dust there's a little bit of dust that's gonna happen but uh this lens is just an incredible lens sharp as a tack very decently quick focusing 1.2 so really good at night I mean, if you are photographing a band or uh, something like that, this is a, just a must have lens, I think. Uh, and they, they're they definitely not as expensive as some of the, the nice uh, Canon glass, of course, but this lens is just incredible. It's a, it's a beautiful lens, but it's also just so dang perfect. It's got the, the coatings on it that really render color accurately, not a lot of lens flare it's it's actually a shame because it's so perfect i actually start getting bored with it it might sound ridiculous but uh but if you're shooting a wedding this is a no-brainer between I, i'd say if you only had two lenses this and the 23 um or even this and the 16 is kind of those two yeah it's 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 impossible to beat this lens i gotta say it's uh it is incredible so the remainder of these lenses right because we talked about the kelios and how it's not a fuji lens but you can adapt it right there's just a little you can see this little piece right here so it's an m42 mount to fx which is a fuji mount so they they're just slight difference right and they they offset the lens just so that the aps-c sensor can read that uh perfectly so you just need little adapters and all of these little lenses have adapters making them bigger lenses i have a little bit of gear acquisition syndrome and it started with this little guy right here this is a canon 50 uh, 1.4 so this is an incredible lens it's it's a beautiful lens 
Uh, it's from, I believe this one's from like 1978 or something to that effect. Absolutely beautiful. The uh, the lens, it, it has certain coatings, and I would say this is more of a blue lens, really good with blues and greens. Um, it's small, it's very, very uh, dense for what it is, very good metal, uh, but just beautiful. The cloud flares on this, they're so imperfect, uh, but I love it, and it's, it's decently sharp. Um, absolutely, I gotta say, although I do like the Helios and I love that 56 millimeter Fuji, this frankly is the one that when I'm, when I'm adapting a lens, which is most of the time. Uh, this is the one that's on my camera almost all of the time. I love this thing. Uh, great for just beautiful portraits, flower shots, uh, some landscapes, right? Because I like to I like to focus in a little bit. You know, less is more a lot of times, but oh my God, I love this lens. I, I, I cannot say enough good things, uh, especially for something that has been so well kept by the previous owners. So I try to baby it as much as possible. Then I went ahead and ordered actually both of these within the next you know, a couple days, and I, I said, hey, let me try out a couple of these, and, and in fairness, they weren't terribly expensive, but this is a Nikon 135 uh, 2.8, and the, you know, as you go up in the millimeters, so 135 millimeters, you're gonna get more zoom range, if you didn't know that already. Uh, so this is much better zoom, and it's a, another prime lens, so it doesn't have zoom. As a matter of fact, none of my lenses actually have zoom, they're all prime, and I did that so that they can be smaller, less potential issues and they tend to be sharper lately that's uh less and less the case the lenses are just getting so good right but um this lens is amazing it's 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 one of those things that's nothing to write home about but it's pretty dang sharp even at 2.8 uh, but of course if you stop it down to f5.6 or f8 of course it's going to get even better but um i only use these lenses generally at you know the the, the widest aperture so 2.8 just to give that nice beautiful background that bokeh there this is amazing i love the built-in lens hood this guy is really good with greens and yellows it seems so kind of opposite of the canon um a lot of fun to shoot with but then i got the tacomar and it's because i didn't want to just stick with the typical brands ignore the nikon lens cap it's just what <laughs> fit on there this guy's a 2.5 135 so uh very redundant to have both of these uh but frankly if I had to have only one, I would actually pick the Takamar. I, I, there's something about it. They're both very, very, very good. The Boca in this guy is just, it's a tad bit better, but I wouldn't care either way. I'd be happy to have either, uh, but luckily I have both. And I gotta say the Nikon actually gets less use than this guy. And, and, and I don't know what it is. I think this guy's a little less predictable, which, uh, you know, obviously I'd take that for a wedding, but I would take this for just shooting out and about and, and whatnot. And it's a, it's a I mean, it's a good size lens. It's, it's not quite as heavy as this guy. This guy has a little more heft. Really just a, a beautiful lens. And I believe that both of these are going to be, uh, I want to say early 90s and late 80s, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, I don't buy them specifically for their age, but it is kind of fun to know a little. These guys are the result of uh, uh, my buddy, Mike. He goes, what lens should I get? Because I want to take photographs of birds. And he goes, I want good reach, right? And, and, and of course, the first thing I think of is you want a 24 to 70, generally speaking on a full frame camera, 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200. And, and I'm thinking, okay, that, I mean, that's pretty good, right? But what can you get for what kind of money? And he, he picked himself up an X-T5, I believe. So the slightly newer version of this, this camera, and it got me interested in my, my own gear again, thankfully. What I had recommended to him initially, I said, you can buy the Fuji film version of this, um, but why don't you just pick up a used guy? Uh, and in here, we've got a Canon 80 to 200. This is an F4. And then we've got a, a 75 to 200 f 4.5, but they're very interesting. And I, I'm reading reviews and I'd never had any experience with these, uh, but the magic word was 40 bucks. So I said, hey, get to 70 to 200, because they have a 70 to 200, 80 to 200, and a 75 to 200. Uh, each of them has different qualities. Everybody says they are tack sharp, right? And, and I had no reason to, to not trust it. I've seen the, the images, but they are older lenses, of course. Um, and you can see like this guy has some slight imperfections. Let's see if we can you know, slide imperfections there and I clean these guys out and, and it, nothing's perfect. But for a, an F4 80 to 200, this is, I mean, I, I picked this one up because once once I got onto eBay, I'm a bit of an eBay holic. I'm a sucker for good deals and it applies to camera gear more than anything else, but I had to try it. And, and so I actually picked up the 75 to 200 first. And uh, this guy, 
let's see if we can see it. This guy actually, you probably cannot see that, has a little bit of a fungus in there. Uh, and that happens with uh, some of these guys that they sit in an attic and you'll see, they kind of come out smelling like an old book. Uh, an old bookshop where somebody was smoking in it sometimes, uh, which is this guy's uh, life story. So I, e I, I messaged the, the seller back and I said, hey, I'm sorry, can I send this back to you? And he just gave me a refund. <laughs> he goes, don't worry about it. Like, sends me a refund. Uh, because it probably would have cost him more to send it back and forth. And, uh, that's fine. That was cool. That was very kind of him. And I figure, okay, well, maybe I can try it out. And I've yet to try this one out. But while, uh, while going through the process for the return of this guy, I also picked up this because I said, all right, well, let me pick up a different one. And I saw the 80 to 200 millimeter. I got a better deal on it. I think this one was, uh, instead of 40 bucks, it was like $32. And so I picked up this guy and a little, uh, I had one more adapter, which the uh, FD is the Canon FD mount. Uh, that's the style on this guy. And then FX, which is of course the Fuji. So I had one more of these, I popped that on there. And this lens is a little different than this guy. So where this guy's an F4.5, this guy's an F4. So uh, it's also a macro lens. I believe both of these guys should be a macro lens. I believe that this one close focus is a little bit better but you can see the diameter of this is a little bit bigger than this because of the f4 so more uh more bokeh there uh being an 80 to 200 i know this does close focus well enough for any of my purposes uh, but it's it's very strange because it also has a longer throw you actually have to turn the lens uh much more in order to focus it which is kind of interesting so uh, not a problem but definitely not the one you're going to take out to sports events i'd probably pick this for sports but um now my buddy says these these guys are not sharp and that is something that i'll have to test out uh because you never know right and it's, these are not the canon l glass and the l is, stands for I spent a lot, a lot, a lot of money and got a red ring around my lenses, but uh, it's not the Canon L glass, but they should be pretty dang good. Now, both of these guys are from Japan, and uh, as you can see, made in Japan here. Um, the, the biggest deal with that being that Japanese lenses are better glass. It's a sharper glass, higher quality standards. The Japanese know how to make, uh, or at least knew how to make really good glass in general, uh, whereas something made in Korea, China, Taiwan, those are going to be a little bit lower quality glass and that matters you know if you're shooting somebody's wedding and you want to have the highest image quality possible um and and a lot of these guys uh, a lot of the fuji lenses you're actually going to see um, are also made in japan this is kind of the setup and i do have some lighting gear that i haven't touched for a long time i'm sure the batteries are just shot on those but this is one of those things that i would actually like to start a new project and that new project is going to be pulling out each of these lenses cruising around quartzite and seeing kind of uh what what i can create photographically uh with these what, what images i can get of the uh well quirky creations of quartzite right uh, one of the things that, that i think would be really cool is to create maybe a photo book someday uh, show folks that like you, look you can live cheaply you can live expensively but uh, you can live tiny or you can live large which for me i consider fifth wheel living very large but here's kind of what it looks like there is no better place on the you know the western half of the u.s that i have seen to photograph RVs and here in Quartzsite, there's such a density out here of, of really cool uh, trailers and motorhomes and uh, school buses and, and anything, you name it. So uh, I, I plan on going and doing a little bit of a hunt. I think that would be really neat. So that'll actually be in tomorrow's video. If you guys have any questions at all, if you're into photography and such, uh, let me know. I'd love to see it. I'd love to know your questions. I'd love you to share your own experiences. Uh, maybe you know a lens that you're like, dude, you gotta get it, it's cheap which is the key because I'm not spending a lot of money on, on gear, right? Uh, it's cheap and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful lens. Let me know or don't because it might just cause problems. Don't send me an eBay link for sure. Now I'm really gonna shift gears in order to end this video. I found out yesterday that somebody I've known for a, a, for a pretty long time and uh, we spent a lot of time in our, in our childhood together. Um, she uh, took her own life on December 12th 2022 leaving behind her husband and four children it is a terrible terrible thing to, to have found out and I can only imagine what her family is going through she lost her battle with depression in one way or another we all know somebody who has struggled with that if you yourself have not struggled with that right there were four big things that have really gotten me out of kind of a similar place 
and I know that we don't all have that. And this is something that has really kind of inspired me to uh, collect my thoughts and and share my own experiences. You know, not as necessarily a recommendation for others, but just a kind of an autobiographical story uh, in a way because you never know who it could help. I just want to share that it's 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 hard to hear that somebody you had known for so long for you know very well um, you know is gone and and under these conditions um, I think it's it's terrible and I'm so sorry to her you know to her family you know I, I, I do know that there are resources right um, there's a lot of resources out there but I don't think personally uh, in my experience they're not close to enough there's not close to enough resources out here I think there's plenty of evidence for that so uh, but we can only do what we can do and yeah, and I'm just uh, it's, it's a very sad thing to hear so Thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.